joining me in the studio today is Elio Danner, the founder and president of the European School of Economics. Well, Mr. Danner, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Well, the European School of Economics is known internationally. It's based in London and also in Italy. Can you just first start by introducing what kind of work you do there? Yes. Uh, when uh, I founded the European School of Economics, I wanted uh, uh, to create a very special school, something that uh, you know couldn't repeat what what uh, other business school were doing, but uh, to have something that uh, could uh, uh, extirpate, to bring out the very dream of every student, and uh, you know we are not a school that. Uh, try to add knowledge or uh, concepts or ideas coming from uh, other schools or other other uh, realities but uh, we did want to uh, have from the student himself herself something that was unique and uh, the only unique thing that uh, each of us has got within is the dream and then, you know, we were uh, working um, on the dream of each student, trying to liberate the, 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 the inner being from many uh, layers of uh, useless uh, stuff and uh, to let the dream come out. And this is uh, very important because, because you can see that when you respect your own dream, you will see that the reality outside yourself uh, will follow. Well, this is quite a unique way to approach business. And I think that your philosophy has been summarized in this book that you've written, which is called The School for Gods. Can you just start by explaining what exactly is your business philosophy? Then The School for Gods is a novel, you know, just uh, with uh, a character that uh, is uh, living a very ordinary life finds difficult to survive in a society like ours. And then uh, uh, he's uh, almost, you know, on the way of suiciding himself just because he was not able to, to face all the difficulties and the problems in life. But uh, in that very moment, he meets a very special being. And uh, I called him the dreamer and uh, the dreamer is uh, someone that tells him that that uh, you know the cause of all the difficulties and problems in life it was uh, himself and uh, he had to intervene on the, on his inner being because the reality outside himself could obey could uh, transform this is uh, mm -hmm. something uh, about the book it tells you that, mm -hmm. that, that uh, the inner being is uh, the author of whatever happens outside yourself. Okay. Well, from the title of the book, The School for Gods, it gives you the impression that you're trying to say that there's something great in all of us. So this business philosophy, do you think that this is something that just very business minds can um, take on board? Or is this the kind of philosophy that everybody can use in their daily life? Yes. The thing is that... Uh, you know, I discovered that, uh, you know, the, the antique sentence of Socrates was uh, know thyself, know yourself. And, uh, you know, I discovered that to know yourself, you first have to know what you are not because you can meet something that is real within yourself. Then uh, I understand that, that uh, we are... Uh, uh, made of 99% uh, of what we are not and 1% of what we really are, then, then life just uh, is mirroring, uh, you know, this, uh, let's say, lie that we have within ourselves, that we are, you know, just go go governed, ruled by what we are not and not by what we really are.
And then, then life, you know, is just mirroring something that is false within ourselves, and we do not know this. Up to the moment that someone can tell us how to touch what we really are. Well, this seems like a very important theological life lesson, but how does this translate into the world of business and economy? How does this translate in reality? Yes. Uh, you know, the, the finan fi financial life is uh, just uh, uh, a reflection of what uh, is your way of thinking and feeling. Then, uh, you know, you see, the, 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 the success and the victory in life is uh, something that is reflecting you know, your uh, inner victory. It is uh, something that you have to win uh, within yourself. Then uh, the book says, uh, win it before it happens. That means uh, you have to win uh, you know, all your fears and doubts, anxieties, you know, and uh, wrong attitudes, uh, false ideas. You have to, to get rid of all that before you can uh, have a beautiful life. Then, uh, you know, life, you know, for whoever says that they have enemies or antagonists or life, there is a bad guy or a bad thing that is attacking you, it's just because they are not able to see that, the, that whatever happens in life has to have your inner consent, mm -hmm. then, then it is you yourself who is sending and expressing and projecting whatever is happening. Okay. Well, obviously in Europe at the moment, we're suffering from quite a financial crisis. Do you think that from your philosophy, this can be seen as people's errors and how can we learn from this situation to move forward and to do better in the future? Yes, what they call the, the, the economic crisis is uh, just uh, a, a reflection of uh, inner values, inner ideas. That is the f failure of, uh, um, you know, of the inner uh, economy, let's say. You know, if you are not able to manage and uh, govern um, yourself and within yourself, you will not be able to govern others and govern the world outside yourself. Then, uh, you know, you have to learn something that I call self-government, first of all. And uh, then you can uh, uh, see that, that the world outside yourself will uh, answer, uh, you know, in the proper way what, what uh, you are within. Then the, the crisis that we uh, see outside ourselves is not objective, but subjective. We are, uh, you know, expressing uh, our subjectivity mm -hmm. in the outer world, believing that it is objective, and the, uh, we become a victim of our uh, our own projections. Mm -hmm. Then, then the European crisis or the worldwide crisis is for me just a very subjective crisis. Well, you were telling me earlier that when you were building your business, money has never been your goal. It's been a result almost. Can you explain this mentality? Because for a lot of people, this would be very hard to comprehend. Yes. You know, it's, it's in the book, uh, I have a, a chapter called Having is Being. Then if you, you cannot have without being, you know, you can have only what you are then you can possess only what you are responsible for, nothing more, nothing less, than your inner responsibility is uh, producing uh, your uh, prosperity and richness outside yourself. Well, now um, the European School of Economics, you're hoping to branch out into China. Um, can you just tell me about your plans and what you hope the future will hold regards to this? Yes. Uh, we have centers in Italy, Rome, Florence, Milan, in Madrid, in London, which is the main center, and in New York. Uh, I think the next uh, step would be, the next center would be in Istanbul, and uh, 
Furthermore, I think that China has to be one of our center because I really believe that uh, Chinese culture has to fuse and to become one with the Western cultures. Um, how do you see the business environment in China? How do you think that's different to the business culture in the West? And do you think um, the dialogue between the two countries and having students coming from both countries will help people build stronger ties? Yes, you know, it's, I don't believe that that uh, we have a Chinese ethics or a, or a Western ethics or a British or Italian or American. I believe that uh, within ourselves uh, there is uh, a common principle that is a sort of oneness, unity, that, that uh, I am sure that uh, my school uh, with, uh, with its philosophy, with my philosophy, I think that will be very uh, much accepted by the Chinese uh, people. Because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you are not uh, perceiving the world for what I, I see. Um, it's, uh, you are not perceiving the world, you are projecting the world. And I, I think that it is very much close to the antique philosophies that, that China was uh, you know, transmitting in uh, thousands of years. And uh, you know, the fact that, that uh, you should never identify with the world outside, but uh, to respect and listen to the world within yourself, it is uh, a common uh, uh, principle that will uh, uh, make the European School of Economics be accepted and um, I, I am sure that we will uh, be very successful. Yeah. Well, what do you think are the biggest business challenges that China faces today? You know, it's, it's, uh, I divide uh, in, uh, the, the, the society in uh, two uh, opposite forces, but they complete each other. There are uh, individuals and there are masses. You know, it's, uh, we need both of them. We need the individuals to create. And the masses, sorry if I say so, it's not, I, I am not trying to offend any, anything, but they complete each other, they, uh, masses destroy. And uh, this is important. To, uh, destroy in the sense that it's not uh, uh, killing each other or revolutions or wars or conflicts, but it is uh, just the balance with the individuals. Masses cannot create. Only individuals can create. And there must be a force that can balance the creative force of the individuals, and the, which is we call a destroying force, but uh, it is just the balancing yeah. between the two. Okay. Well, your book, The School of Gods, has been translated into Chinese. How has it been received in China? Oh, it's, uh, I, it, it, it is a very new thing that I cannot tell you it's, if okay. it uh, okay. will be successful. I know that, <laughs> that it was uh, my, one of my students uh, brought the, the, the School for Gods in uh, Turkey and now it's uh, the uh, bestseller in that country. I hope that uh, it will be the, the same and will happen the same in China. And what do you think about this book really appeals to the audience? You said that it's sort of, it's a story rather than teaching people, it's a philosophy that's inside everybody. You know, they, everybody tries to be successful and to win in life. And you cannot win in life if you don't give attention to your inner being, you know, to your inner dream. If you just uh, try to, to have success outside yourself, and let's say that you can be a successful person without uh, having your being supporting your havings, you know, that is a, a, a misfortune more than a fortune. Because, because uh, the way you received that uh, richness and that uh, havings, in the same way you will lose everything. If you do not have your inner being supporting your inner being that is responsible for the, what you, are, you have.